This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. In the times that we're living in right now, this is an opportunity for us to stand out. When people are operating in hate, we operate in love. It's an opportunity to stand out. We do that because we've been made that way. There is a purpose for your life. Introducing Grace Life Academy, an innovative approach to learning God's Word. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings. You'll have access to comprehensive video Bible lessons that include features such as e-courses, study guides, an online community, quizzes, and more. Text GLA to 51555 or go online to MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you, and I give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Praise God. Well, God bless you. I pray that your day has been filled with the favor of God, that the power of God's blessing is working in your life, and that you will understand that God is perfecting everything that concerns you. Uh, I want to get right into this tonight. Last week we began to talk about grace-based holiness and we talked about what holiness, uh, what, it, what, it, what, it, what it is and what it is not. And we concluded that holiness is all about being whole, that God has made you whole. So when he says, be ye holy as he is holy, he is saying, be whole as he is whole. In other words, he made you whole, and he expects for us to begin to mature and come to that place of being who we've been made, and we've been made whole, so we need to come to that place of wholeness. And so I want to begin again in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30, and I've got a lot to share with you, and I believe that this is going to really change your life forever. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30, as we look at holiness, grace-based holiness, and just see how this works together. Uh, verse 30 says, uh, but of him are you in Christ Jesus? Now, the day we got born again, we are in Christ Jesus. We've been reconciled to God by Christ Jesus. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God, Jesus, is made unto us wisdom. Jesus is made unto us righteousness. Jesus is made unto us sanctification. And Jesus has been made unto us redemption. Now, interesting, uh, interestingly enough, in this word sanctification, uh, it is the same Greek word translated holiness. And so, it, it, sanctification, holiness, they come from the same Greek word in the New Testament. Now, holiness, as I said last week, is a fruit of grace. You cannot be more righteous because you are already 100% righteous by Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because of his blood, we have been made righteous. But under grace, you can grow in holiness in the way that you choose to live your life, living a life of wholeness, nothing missing and nothing broken in your life. And then according to verse 30, practical holiness is not possible if you don't understand that you're you're righteous in Christ. The day you come to realizing I am righteous in Christ, then that's the day you'll also realize that I'm whole. 
the day that you'll realize that I am holy. And then once you have the person, then you have all these other things. Romans 8, 32, he gave us Jesus, and he's given us all these other things. And I think last week I, I closed with the erroneous teachings of holiness that were directly mostly towards women. And uh, so tonight I want to pick up with 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 29. 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 29. David said something here that I think is worth paying attention to. Uh, and I want you to look at this, and we'll begin here tonight. He said, Give unto the Lord the glory that's due unto his name. Bring an offering, come before him, worship the Lord, now watch this phrase, in the beauty of holiness. Underline that phrase, the beauty of holiness. So David said, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Beauty is, of course, something that you behold. But he says here, and, and here's what I want you to understand, that holiness comes from, from the word complete or whole. So worship the, the, word, the Lord in the beauty of wholeness. Worship the Lord in the beauty of completeness. And so the opposite of holiness, and please understand, holiness comes from that word complete. It comes from that word whole. Uh, it, it, it comes from the place of something that's already been done. Already, It's complete. It's whole. And so if we look at the opposite of holiness, religion has said that the opposite of holiness uh, is sin. But I say to you tonight that the, the opposite of holiness is not sin. All my life I thought, well, you know, the opposite of holiness is sin. And, and, and then if you sin, then you're not holy. And, and, and I thought about this from last week when I taught this. I thought about the fact that you know, God made us whole, he made us holy, and he wants us to mature into that. And so likewise, a, a, a baby that's learning how to walk, he'll mature into his, his, his physical and his humanity, but as he's learning how to walk, he may fall. Well, you don't beat him because he fell. You pick him up and you encourage him to continue to walk. You pick him up and you encourage him to continue to mature, and then eventually he gets that. I believe the same thing is true where we've been made holy, we've been made whole, then if you miss the mark, then you're not going to be penalized from maturing into what God has made you. And so this is why you can't say that, that sin or, or, or the, the opposite of sin is, is, is holiness. The opposite of holiness is not sin. The opposite of holiness is not sin. The opposite of holiness is being common. The opposite of holiness is commonness. It's, um, it's, 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 it's like a, you're alike something else. Uh, let's put it practically. If the world is sick, then the opposite of holiness is you're sick too, common with the world. If the world is worried, then, you know, uh, the opposite of holiness is you be worried too. So what he's trying to show you is that you should not see yourself common or like the world. You've been separated from what the world goes through, and you have been sanctified uh, as someone that's uncommon with the world. So when they're sad, you're happy. And when they're, they're sick, you're healed. And when they're frustrated, you have the joy of the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? So when, the opposite of holiness would be when you're trying to be common with the word or commonness, commonness. And so you got to examine that. Somebody says, well, you're not holy. Well, they're saying you're not holy because of sin. And, and in reality, you're not holy because you're being common with the world. And holiness is not being common with the world. You're whole. You've been created to be whole. 
nothing missing, nothing broken, and you mature into that wholeness, and you begin to see the fruit of holiness in your life. So when God says, be holy, basically what he is saying, when he says, be holy, he's saying, stand out. When he says, be holy, he's saying, be whole. When he says, be holy, he says, stand out. He says, be separate. You are my people. Be holy as I am holy. Stand out. And, and, and I'm telling you, in, 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 the, in the times that we're living in right now, this is an opportunity for us to stand out. When people are operating in hate, we operate in love. It's an opportunity to stand out. We do that because we've been made that way. We've been made holy so we can forgive while they hold on to all non-forgiveness. We've been made holy. We're, we're, we should be, seriously, the light of the world or something the world can look at and say, that's how it's ought to be, it should be done. Oh, I get it. They're not holding on to these things. They're going forward, praise God. They're not allowing, you know, somebody to use their anger against them. They're going to go forward. And so the question you need to ask yourself Am I standing out? Am I separate from what we see in the world with people who have not been reconciled with God? And so, here's an example. You look at this. When people, again, when, when you see the world, they're worried, you're in peace. All right? So, you're not common with them. You're, you're not worried like they're worried. It, it's, it's what I spoke of before. It, it's so important that we understand that as the church, we're, we're the light of the world. Uh, we're the salt of the earth. We, uh, the world should be revolving around the church to see how we're doing it. And we, we've got to understand that. So, you know, when they're broke, we're, we're, we're prospering. When they're sick, we're healed. God's people stand separate from all of that stuff. That's what it means. So, holy literally means separate from the world. Look at 1 Peter 2 and 9. It's separate from the world. You are whole, praise God, in this world. Nothing missing, nothing broken. That's not so with those who are in the world. Look at what he says, 1 Peter 2 9. He says, but you are a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You are a peculiar people, peculiar people, that, that, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. So, your, your, your life is, 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 is not common with the darkness that you've been called out of. While, while you, were, you were darkness, now that you've been reconciled to God, you're light. That's what this thing is all about where holiness is concerned. So, when people don't see the beauty of holiness, if they don't see the beauty of holiness, they won't pursue it. When the world is revolving around the church and they see the beauty of holiness, they see that there's something different there, they see that, that uh, they're not common with what they're going through, well, when they see, that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. When they see that, then they, 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 they have a desire to want to pursue that. But when they don't see that, there's no really desire to pursue that. I mean, if, if the church is revolving around uh, the world, then the world has no need to try to pursue it because it's the church that's revolving around the world. And, and it's a sad thing to say, that, but we've got to be careful because it's, some of the churches are like that, revolving around the world. And so the world has no desire at all to want to be like that which re re revolves around them. And so, when people don't see the beauty of holiness, they don't pursue it. Now, look at 1 John chapter 4, 17. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. We're holy. So, we are like Jesus while we're in this world. 1 John 4, 17 says, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Well, we've been put in this world to be holy so we can be a light, so we can be salt with season, so we can be a city that's on the hill where people can see it, and, 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 and our holiness begins to minister to people. You see how we got this all messed up? We started thinking holiness was in the dress, 
and then you put people in bondage because you said, well, if you got pants on, you're not holy. And then we thought holiness was in, you know, wearing a lot of makeup. Or, uh, and, and then you told people that it's a sin to wear makeup, and then they stop wearing makeup. And, 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 and you know, the thing about it, they know, they know something's got to be wrong with that. They know, they, they know something's got to be wrong with that. And so it's important that we begin to see this and correct this. Now look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. So we, as we, we are as he is, but we're like that in the world. And that's what Jesus was like, man. When Jesus was on this earth, I mean, they're acting this kind of way, and you look at Jesus, and he's totally different to the point, well, I'm sure they looked at him as like, this guy is weird. Why? Because, you know, he, the, the Bible just said it, he, peculiar, peculiar people. And he's called us to be peculiar people. So that when people look at us, we're peculiar. We're, we're, we're not common to everybody else. Wow, praise God. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, he says, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, we behold the glory of the Lord. So we're beholding the glory of the Lord. He says, this is what happens. When you start beholding the glory of the Lord, when you start beholding the manifestation of, 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 of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus, you start beholding him, you start beholding Jesus, he says, you're changed into that same image. Well, that's what he meant when he says, you know, as he is, so are we. That comes as a result of beholding him. And the more we behold Jesus, we're going to be changed in the same image from glory to glory. It's a process from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit has committed himself to uh, initiate and to be a part and to be in, in, involved in this process of changing you from glory to glory into that image. So somebody says, well, what is my part then? If the Holy Spirit has committed to changing me from glory to glory, what is my part? My part is to behold him. My part is to behold him. And just by beholding him, the Holy Spirit now is able to change me into that same image by beholding him, by beholding him through the word of God, by beholding him through my relationship, by beholding him, just by beholding him. So holiness is actually, ladies and gentlemen, a person, and his name is Jesus. Holiness is a person. His name is Jesus. Jesus was made unto us. He has made, he's been made for us holiness. And by beholding him, he's been made for us sanctification. And by beholding him, we're changed into that same image. And as he is, so are we in this earth. So listen to me, holiness will not come by looking at yourself. And that's so important. It's, it's, you know, we spend so much time looking at us and checking out what we would do. Holiness is not going to come by looking at yourself. Holiness is in Christ, not in self. It's not going to be in self. It's going to be in Christ. So true holiness looks to Christ. We, we study the life of Jesus, because as he is, so are we. And we look at the life of Christ. Look at John chapter 17, verse 16 through 17. John 17, 16 through 17. He says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Now, we're in the world, but we're not of it. We're not going to carry the same image. Verse 17, he says, uh, sanctify, sanctify, uh, make holy, make whole them through thy truth. So I, I see that. I, I now am made whole through the truth. Sanctify or make holy or make whole through the truth. And then he says, thy word is truth. So again, we're back to the same point of the power that comes by spending time in that word. The power that comes by beholding Jesus through that word. And he says, I am sanctified through the truth. And the Word of God is truth. I'm sanctified through the truth. The Word of grace is truth. The Word of grace is truth. Jesus is grace. And so again, I behold, I behold Jesus as I behold the truths of, of the grace of God. I, I behold Jesus as I behold the Word of truth. I behold Jesus as I behold the gospel of truth. Because that gospel of grace is Jesus. The gospel of grace is all about unveiling Jesus so that we can behold him, so that we can see him. And, and, and as we behold uh, Jesus by unveiling 
him through the gospel of grace, we begin to see him and we begin to, 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 to be made in that same image by the Holy Spirit as he is, so are we in this world. So, how do I look? How do I, you, say, you say, behold him, how do I look? I, I hope I made that plain. You look through the Word of God. You look through the Word of God, then the Holy Spirit begins to transform you. You read to find the glory of the Lord, and the Holy Spirit begins to transform you, transformation that takes place. I want to show you something. Uh, go to the book of Mark chapter 9, verse 2. Speaking of transformation, I want to take you to the mountain of transfiguration in uh, Mark chapter 9 and verse 2. And just if you would allow me, let's, uh, let's go through this and, and, and allow God to reveal some things to us just here in this illustration in Mark chapter 9 and verse 2. All right, now watch very carefully. He says, and after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter, James, and John. Now, it was very significant, not, not by mistake. He specifically wanted Peter, James, and John. And he leadeth them up into a high mountain apart from them, themselves, and he was transfigured before them. So, Jesus leads them up to a high mountain, he's transfigured before them. And his raiment, or his clothes, became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth uh, can whiten them. And there appeared unto them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking to Jesus. So Peter, James, and John went up to this mountain with Jesus, and Jesus was transfigured, and he, he was uh, appeared with Moses and Elijah. Verse 5, and Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make, the, let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. I'm sure it was good to be there. Oh, man. And look at verse 6. For he went not what to say, for they were so afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man any more except Jesus only with them. Wow. So, what was going on here? I, I would read this as, as a young Christian, and I thought it was pretty amazing uh, that you would get an opportunity to behold that. So, I could really relate to them when they said, oh, it was good to be here. But there was so much more going on here. Uh, for example, you know, uh, Moses appeared. Well, what does Moses represent? Moses represents the law. And then Elijah appeared. Well, what did Elijah represent? Elijah represented the prophets. And then Jesus was there with them. And what did Jesus represent? Jesus represented grace and truth. Notice what, what, what they saw, Peter, Peter and, and, and James and John. They saw Moses' law. They saw Elijah prophets. They saw Jesus' grace and truth. So, on the mountain of transfiguration, you have a representation of law, of prophets, of grace and truth. So, two disappeared, and they saw no man only but Jesus. And a voice said, hear him. So, now look at this. Peter, Peter represented stone. James represented replace. John represented grace. What was he saying here? He said, stone replaced by grace. Grace replaced stone. In his new three-message series, Grace-Based Holiness, Creflo Dollar challenges religion and reveals what holiness is really about. 
get all three life-changing messages and the notes to take your study to a new level for a love gift of just 25 US dollars or more. Jesus makes you holy. Your part is to mature into what he has already made you. He has already made you holy. Your part is to mature in who you already are. You will never become more holy as you mature. You simply grow into who God has already made you to be. Holiness is a fruit of salvation, not a root of salvation. Call the number on your screen or visit the website to order your combo today. There is a purpose for your life and you are meant to do great things. Now is the time for you to take charge of your life and move towards your purpose. The key to reaching your destiny is to grow in your understanding of God's grace. Introducing Grace Life Academy, an innovative approach to learning God's Word. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings from Creflo Dollar. You'll have access to comprehensive video Bible lessons that include features such as e-courses, study guides, an online community, quizzes, and more. In as little as 15 minutes a day, you can study God's Word, be encouraged, and learn how to study the Bible, how to overcome fear, how to better your relationships, and so much more. Now is the time for you to take control of your life and join Grace Life Academy. Text GLA to 51555 to get started right now or go online to MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. We want to be sure we are living according to what God has taught us about giving. And we understand that giving and receiving is a spiritual law. It's a reflex of God's love. And I'm so glad that Taff and I begin to understand how to walk in this principle. But we give not out of necessity. We give out of a cheerful heart. We give because we're grateful and we're thankful to what God has done. You know, I, I want you to pray about uh, becoming a giver into Creflo Dollar Ministries today. And if this ministry has blessed you in any way, consider sowing a seed of any amount and we will greatly appreciate it. Thank you in advance for your support and God bless you. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org today. God bless you. Can't make it to service? No problem. Join our online worldwide audience. Experience the same atmosphere of praise, worship, and teaching of God's Word from any mobile or smart device. We're excited that you've decided to stay involved as we continue our mission to flood this world with the gospel of grace and empower change in the lives of people all over the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes. 